Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to the final session of this workshop. So just before we start with the day's proceedings, I want to remind everyone that there are actually three lectures today. So the final lecture will be given by one of the young participants. So this is the ICTS tradition. Okay, so it's a great pleasure to introduce Professor Hida and he'll give the final talk of his mini course on non-valuing modulo P of values of a modular form at CM points. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like to prove this non-vanishing theorem today and uh, I'm happy to compete with our Bible. Uh, I gave a lecture when I was young, 1984, in University of Arisud or say, and I started giving a graduate course. And uh, I had uh, 20 some people at the beginning. It is a one, one uh, semester course. And at the end, I had uh, only a few people left, like Peran Liu, uh, Jack Tilwin, Pierre Cormez, uh, Taylor, uh, the Richard Taylor, all great mathematicians, all other junk gone. That was great, actually. So you are not junk. Okay, so um, I just recall the non-vanishing theorem. Okay, the hypothesis is And there exists an element psi in F intersected or completed in each class V in O modulo L to dj was sufficiently large integer j such that <clears throat> the Q expansion coefficients at the infinity of psi of modular form started at F. This is defined over F. The finite, the algebraic closure of finite field is non zero. Uh, this J actually depends on the prime Gothic L. And uh, um, when the rank of gamma is one, I have a quite a explicit form of it, but for general rank, it is, you will see in the proof how it is determined. Okay, so then, the set, I would write X, that is a character chi of gamma finite order character L power order such that the integral over CL and minus of chi psi d phi f. So as before, this character psi from delta minus to F cross is fixed. This is a branch character. Okay. And uh, this integral is non zero in F is Zariski dense in my sense. In GM. So the D, D was the length of the was the L of your three part gamma. Okay. Uh, this is defined over QL bar. If uh, OL is isomorphic to ZL, uh, so rank is one, then this, R, this J can be given to be R for R, 
given by so l to the r exactly divide the number of elements of field of rationality of f all defined over this finite field lambda and psi and i need to add one root else roots of unity and it's multiple multiplicative group yes but for higher rank uh, it's hard to describe this really okay so there's a natural line here, so I don't need to do that. Um, so you remember that I defined for infinite sequence of integers Of integers, um, and underlined, and uh, out of that, I created a set of uh, points of similar variety, actually, rating the Q. And here, I suppose that by projection. Q goes isomorphically to delta minus. So this is a by projection to okay. So this is my choice of Q. And um, uh, the this point psi is given by S of A A inside C. This is a disjoint union over all n of CL and CLN. And uh, uh, no. So this is inside the disjoint union. And I in an underlined of kernel of gamma n to an I to gamma j. That j is as in the theorem. And uh, I, I will say how you define this an underlined direction. Uh, this j is all the time taken to be bigger than R. And this is bigger than or equal to one. So this is kind of certain. So, <laughs> by reciprocity, similar to reciprocity. I did a big cheating in the third lecture, and I hoped somebody would pointed me out, and nobody did. So I just kept that cheating. The point here is that if you are rank one case, say your gamma n is something a kind of line, it is isomorphic to z over basically l to the n z. Right, and in the bottom, so you have a zero here, gamma n L to the J exists, right? You, you average character, so you apply sigma is just a, for Frobenius, it is just a sigma to the sum power of P power. So P is actually P to the J was rather some uh, kind of things, right? 
That means it's just a character of this one die. So by making a trace operation, by trace, your, your character taking trace, then you have a, some index of this, uh, this field times you have a chi v. If you further insist that here, not just a condition that uh, the, the chi restricted to gamma L to the J is chi V. In other words, chi V is something like I identified the gamma and L to the J canonically with O over L to the J. So this is actually zeta J to the trace of UV for any U here regarded as an element here, right? So this character is just supported on gamma and Lj and outside it's zero. And you get something like that. This is a non-zero. This is true for one line case, rank one case. But say if you have a two line D2 case, then you have a two line D gamma and Lj is just a bottom sort of small part. And your character, maybe just your character just giving isomorphism to mu L to the N for this part and just kick, can kill this part. I mean, all the time you are this way because it's just a rank one group. So uh, this could be in kernel of chi, the other line. Then the, you can't actually project just taking a trace because sigma just acts diagonally here. So you, you, you can go down here from this side, but this guy still, it, it is trivial. So it still remains here, right? And um, my projection of F goes to F psi, and then I went to FV. That is something like summation over zeta J trace V U and F applied alpha U over pi to the G L J, something like that, right? This is um, U running through O over L to the J, something like that I did. Then this is kind of very simple form it has and it's um, just basically up to some non-zero constant, a psi f q psi, but psi has to be in minus v plus or v only it has a coefficient. And um, um, so this is a finite sum, bounded finite sum. So if you can go down to here to this one, it works. However, here, this, the, 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 this entire thing, cardinality or order, grows to infinity as n goes to infinity. I can't project it down to this real thing, okay? So uh, the point here is that if the sky belongs to say x with this, with this condition v here, that means v chi is given v, this is just a finite splitting, so I can work instead of entire X, but this uh, calligraphic X defined by V and that I might say XV, often I just write X. Right? So the, this, this can't be a finite sum. I need to do something. So an underline is just, if I write Z, then this is just a chi such that integration CLN minus of chi psi d phi n fn is zero. Of course, all the time this, this n, L to the n is conductor of chi. This is zero guy, x is non zero guy. And out of that, uh, if when rank is one, what I do is just, I choose N underlined to be those N I's 
which appear, so the N underlined is made of N such that integration CRN minus chi psi d phi fn is zero, right? And also I impose n bigger than r because my conjugation all the time needs to fix all this f lambda psi mu n. So this is the way of defining this. Then by Simula's reciprocity law, all character of given order n satisfies this condition. And that, that this, this picture. But for this one, you have a trouble, right? And I, you, I need to really solve this question. Okay? It's not just a therefore, similar to reciprocity law. I need to add some of the work of mine, okay? So I, what I use is rigidity of torus. So how you do? I, I, I consider the very specific closure of D underlined of QL bar. This shows that. I actually take a discrete variation in WL complete DDR residue field F now L algebraic closure inside CI, okay? Then I also replace this to GM, now formal scheme over the D and uh, defined over this WL, I need to add all new L infinity kind of things. Formal completion of this guy along the point of mod L point identity, okay? And uh, you have some subset like this X. Then you take a Zariski closure. Then you have X bar. I have a same point X here. I mean, this is isomorphic anyway. And uh, uh, then I take its formal Zariski closure X fat, a schematic closure. And it's quite easy to show that dimension of X bar is equal relative dimension of WL of X hat. You can assume that this is defined over WL, uh, just extending this guy slightly. Okay. So that means if you assume this is, um, so the dimension, that's also the same for Z. Something like that. And um, I assume that this is properly, proper closed subset. So it is really less than D. Then I, I want to get contradictions. Against. A psi f is not zero for some, some suitably chosen psi, right? So if this happens, then this guy is big, lot of vanishing guy. Therefore, for a lot of n, you pick, you just define same way this n underlined. Uh, yeah, I wrote that. I haven't erased anything. Uh, yeah, yeah, this N and um, N underlined. I didn't write an underlined definition. Oh, here it is. Um, you just define same way, but you change this as further down to slightly bigger J. And um, then not just a conjugate of it, but all the element of order given when would vanish. That kind of things I need, right? So that's how things I do. 
Oh, this theorem, so the resiliency theorem I use, and that this this kind of resiliency of torus is studied by Chai, Henry Chai, and um, uh, so let me just write it down. The red X of formal spectrum X, you know, P, so this is a formal ring, so it's a complete, uh, with a closed, a closed formal sub scheme. Of G, oh, any power is okay, but I just write D. That's what I need. Hat. Flat geometrically irreducible over WL. This just means this ring T intersected CL is just WL. And the irreducibility is just this T. Just this T is an integral domain. Last, last, this is an integral domain. Okay. And the hypothesis is that, you see, GM is a formal scheme, but then you have an action of ZL. That means you have a coordinate T centered at one. So it's a multiplicative coordinate whose value when T is equal to one, it's, it's a origin center. Okay. And uh, then you pick T is small T minus one. Then T to the sum power S, erotic number is just a stupid binomial polynomial you plug in. And in this way, you get a um, uh, power that is in formal scheme. So this is very important to uh, for this hypothesis. Hypothesis is there exists an open subgroup in the L cross. This is open set of the L also such that uh, X, you apply this U is inside X for all U in U. So X is stable under this action over the open sub scheme, open sub group. So if, so this is kind of remark, I continue here, if, um, X contains a, so I evaluate X in CL or maybe WL, I add all mu L infinity contains is that a skid dense? Subset Omega inside mu L infinity PDD WL mu L infinity. So the L power torsion point is dense. Then there exists an omega in omega and the formal sub torus T such that 
this x is omega trans t translated by omega. Okay. Um, this is proven by Journal of American Mass Society, uh, 24, 2011. It's called a rigidity lemma. When these two, in this case, these two is very elementary. Uh, when D is bigger than two, you need to do more. And that is my contemporary mass. Mass paper, 2014, uh, six, six, I'm sorry. Volume 614, this is the Patetsky Shapiro Memorial Volume. Lemma. 4.1 for any D. Okay, so uh, proof is I, 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 I will do very, very uh, again, I will do cheating, but uh, um, very short sketch here. Uh, one remark is that. Of course, you can uh, at least the statement is valid. Any formal scheme, uh, say, Pretorus and uh, over any variation limb complete, right? And uh, Chai proved this kind of things when w, you re replace W to F, field F, and the statement is basically the same. And uh, uh, and also there's a counter example. Of this theorem, if residue field of your DVR so WL is characteristic zero. So this is in between and in the residue field is a finite field, but Variation. So it is not something easy actually. And that um, is the proof you can find in my mu invariant paper. Uh, I don't know. Chai posted his paper in his web, but I don't think he's published it uh, because the proof and so on is in my uh, mu invariant paper there, another month. And uh, that, that proved black box theorem. And uh, that is a key point of black box theorem proof. But uh, um, uh, it is quite involved, especially in the case of this, this case. And uh, uh, so cheated proof is something like that. When dimension to D is one, then X, if dimension of X is zero, then of course it's just omega by assumption. So there's nothing you to prove. So dimension one, so the peak dimension one means you have a point T of X of infinite order. Then of course X by the, it contains T to the U, X, right? Then the T to the U algebraic Zarsky uh, closure, it's the most obvious that you, it is a torus dimension one. Then you compare dimension X is uh, uh, first, perhaps I should say choosing Omega in Omega, and then move X, replace X by Omega inverse X. So may I assume one is in X, then I, I'm just saying it is one. 
Then this is, is just a T to the ZL. Uh, and uh, this is basically torus. And you, you compute the dimension both side one, so you get the result. Then once dimension bigger than one, you do the same, you pick T in X, infinite order, then in, in this way, you create first torus that is a T to the U to the closure thing. Then you do uh, divide your GM hat D by this torus T1, and you replace your X by its quotient by T1 and the induction. Looks very easy, but it's not easy actually. <laughs> Uh, if we want to know the proof, you can look at my paper. Okay, so that's how this is proved. How you use this rigidity thing? How to use all right. So one point is that of course, if I assumed that dimension I my proof of uh, this non-vanishing theorem is just you consider the x now hat and um, uh, this dimension, suppose this dimension of a relative dimension of a WL is less than D, then you try to get contradiction. This is against to x i f non-zero, right? That, that's the idea. And um, so I, all the time, suppose this dimension less than D, but uh, this is a hypothesis. But uh, if dimension WLX is zero, then it's something like you have a finitely many point set, right? And N underlined is defined to be N integration such that integration over gamma N of chi D phi F psi Q, singles is zero because the conductor of chi is all the time assumed to L to the N. And if you choose a big circle that order L to the N, more than order of some, there exists some positive bound, upper bound of order contains all these points. So the after that, it's all zero. Nothing to do with conjugate and so on, right? So this basically tells you that if dimension is zero, this is basically n times m zero and um, n m zero bigger than j kind of things. M zero, you remember that this is the m zero is defined L is to the m zero is phi phi complex conjugate phi in R. And this is m zero is a minimal such that and uh, all this conductor guy, CM point runs in one, one uh, reducible component V I have chosen. Okay. So that it is it, just arithmetic progression and I apply the density theorem. Okay. Now, um, When 
dimension in, in between, then you have to do really something. Then because if I write P for the P to the R, then by similar reciprocity law, you have the situation I described like that. And this J is the minimal things, J is equal to R, okay? Then I consider for any such P power, gamma P to the sum power J, for example, is just, um, um, you see, because this R by definition is defined to be the L silo subgroup of this group. And this contains L, first L power roots of unity, right? So it is congruent to one modulo L. So this P congruent to one modulo L. And J is just, uh, is, P to the R to the sum power. So, so this guy is also congruent to one modulo L. Therefore, by Shimura's reciprocity, this X to the Frobenius of order P is just a X to the P power. This is a reciprocity. And that is therefore, no, this is the reciprocity that is in X. So X hat is stable under gamma P hat. Yeah, gamma P hat is just a subgroup generated by P and this is open. So it satisfies uh, one condition for the rigidity theorem. This U is gamma to the sum P to the R. However, there's another condition that this, this sub scheme is geometrically reducible. You don't know this X hat is geometrically reducible or not. However, However, you write down X hat as a union of irreducible component I hat. Then this is a finitely many because this formal, formal scheme is Nesserian. And this set, so the set of I hat, I have, and of course, gamma P permutes it. And there's a finitely many. So each, each I hat is fixed by gamma P to the sum power. Okay, so that is gamma. I write gamma P to the J. Right, a fin finite index sum. So this P to the sum power, I just write bold face P. Okay, so this, this is the one I choose. Therefore, I don't know what this J is. I don't know exact knowledge of this X hat. So if rank is bigger than, uh, if the, 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 this dimension is bigger than zero, dimension X hat is bigger than zero in this setting, then I don't know what P gamma J is. If it is zero, I mean, when gamma is rank one, then it is R, okay. So that means each I hat, each I hat by rigidity, tells you that each high hat is some omega times torus, right? 
So therefore I can write X hat is a union of finite uh, index set. And omega to I of TI. Okay, up to here clear. The logic is. I heart is may not be formal subgroup. It just assisted by roots of unit. Omega J, omega I, as roots of unit. Because omega I, omega I is therefore, omega I to the P to the capital P is omega R. Huh? In other words, this is a L to the sum power roots of unity. And this L to the sum power divide P minus one. So it is fixed by this uh, uh, Galois group. This, this uh, hypothesis, I just assume this geometrically reduced, so one component show up. So I apply this to each I hat that is fixed by open subgroup gamma capital P. All right. So therefore, it has this shape. Okay. But essentially, you maneuver a little bit that you maneuver a little bit that this, um, you just replace GM hat to D by GM hat D modulo subgroup generated by omega i's. This is still isomorphic to GM hat D. So you can assume omega i is basic. It's just a move a little bit of order of the character. Right, but uh, anyway, I can basically assume, can assume that this omega i is one for all i. So here's a picture when there is two. Um, so I use the residue theorem, I erase it. So here's a picture, for example, D2, Then you have say P1 and for example, say P2 like that. I can just make it this picture really a linear algebra. So I just state module of T1, I erratic state module, state module P2. And this is uh, this plane is the L one square, in this case, I just suppose D2, right? Then you see, so here's a basis E1, E2 here, the original basis. Then you have a diagonal line E bound by E, E1 plus E2. And this three, these are all corresponding to a character. These are coming basically uh, corresponding to, I erased, but I have drawn two lines, right? In the dimension two case, two line in the L, Z over L to the N Z, two Z over L to the N Z for each, and gamma and L to the I somewhere here. And uh, this, this is a character. So this is a one character chi one to the uh, some power. This is chi two to the another power spans this, right? 
So this, this corresponds to chi one and chi two if you model out by this guy modulo some L times something. Okay. And then, then So I invoked formal geometry, and um, then I consider, for the, in general, so D is greater than one or equal to two. So I just choose a basis. E1, ED of the state module ZL1 to the D. Okay, I just move this picture around, or well, this middle line I need to avoid uh, from this zero set, I mean the non zero set of character integral. This guy and this guy and that guy I want to avoid. But you may not be able to do if you start from given basis. So I make a base change. So that's why I choose a basis E1 ED. And I restart. Okay, so this is column vector. And I sometimes think this as ZL matrix B. Uh, this B, G, matrix of ZL, I'm sorry. All right. Then, I would claim, and I consider B also a set, and I consider B union, I add this E, that is E1 plus diagonal bar. Okay? And that I call B prime. And I want to avoid all this state thing. So I just write, I, I make a QL span that is V1 and the QL span, that is V2. So I, I may have a lot in this general case. So notation is something like that. And I want to have this avoid total. In other words, V in GLD, non-avoiding guy with the property B prime intersected union over I of VI is not empty. This is a bad guy. This is actually, this, this dimension, linear space dimension, all dimension less than D, right? By our assumption. So this is proper, radically closed analytic set. And dimension, dimension is entire this guy is having d square and minus of this maximal dimension. Dimension of this, I call it delta, that's max of this dimension, minus delta, obviously. So it is less than d square. So a lot of outside guy satisfies this picture. Right? So what I do, that produces a lot of uh, characters, that produces a lot of characters, chi one, chi d, basically spanning all these lines, b lines. Why? I would just take a tubular neighborhood on this one. neighborhood. What does it mean? Tumor neighborhood, I call it U now again. This is not a subgroup. So U by definition, I may further, may further need to J gross, choose 
there is further sufficiently large than R, then this is a very small neighborhood of E1 plus gamma P E2, gamma this capital P E D is a tubular neighborhood like this of this diagonal line. So I have a, here, I have a character chi one, if you restrict to the L to the N, order L to the N, then it corresponds to L to the N over E1, chi two, corresponds to L to the N E2, and so on. And it avoids all non-zero closure integral, uh, non-zero, all non-zero character integral lines in this union of V1 and V2, right? So it avoids all. Therefore, integral of this any power, chi one, as long as you make P capital P to the sum power, chi two, of capital P of another power, chi D of capital P to the third last power, and you sum up I1, ID, then this is just a, you can think this, uh, you restrict, you, you, you just, this product is therefore, product of I of trace F capital P, you add L to the N and new L to the N, well, that's, that's the order of chi one. It's all the same, having same order, chi one, chi, uh, chi N, so I just add one chi N. And you restrict to F to the P of chi, I, something like that you get. So I can operate now this trace operation for each line, right? It's originally one line, but now I can apply it any line. So therefore, therefore, if I choose sufficiently large J, then that this definition of N, now I need to replace this possibly very large J. And this still contains arithmetic progression. Like the case of one dying case, dimension zero. And then you come out a density theorem out of density theorem. You get FV has to be zero, but this is contradiction against against a psi F not zero for psi in minus D. And uh, that's the end of the story. Um, I thank you that you all survived. <laughs> and also I, I need to thank the audience uh, online. And uh, I don't hate those people killed. Uh, that is fine. My proof is often very complicated. And uh, that's why I, I often make mistakes. But uh, making a mistake is also a fun doing mathematics. Like actually told me this, oh, I have a lot of time to study something, it's good. And uh, I studied three years and uh, this is the answer. Actually, I may not agree with me, then I will work again and that would be good for me. Perhaps not good for him, but. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Can you can you talk in the mic so that
Ah, yeah, yeah, it's one. Oh. Um, no, yeah. So, so now, like, if the degree of the prime is greater than one, then the uh, as as you said, then this J is something maybe possibly inexplicit, sufficiently large. Right, but, sufficiently but, large. But when one, it is R. But but then in practice, like, how can one check this hypothesis? Ah, uh, that's perhaps impossible. I mean, you need to study really the L-conductor character and uh, the, the, this kind of integral. If we, you can say what this really set is, that is basically, you know, all the L-values already. But this is to prove L-value doesn't vanish often, right? And that, therefore, without knowing L-value, it is absolutely difficult to, to um, know what the only way to compute this kind of integral is to use this uh, Shimura or Brzez results to relate it to the L value. And especially cast form cases, central critical L value, it could be often zero. And uh, if you know when it is zero, uh, you are a great mathematician, right? And that's why I don't think uh, I, I, I can do that very well. So, but one rank is one, this is quite well given by R. And, and, and sorry, and maybe just a related question is there's some in, in practice, like one has to check some Q expansion calculation. Oh, Q expansion calculation for, for Eisenstein series, you have explicitly know the Q expansion, and therefore uh, it's. Um, it satisfies this assumption of non-vanishing CLM. If it is a cast form, uh, I think Milnun C did it for uh, trivial Neven character time type, and then you have a root number plus one and minus one. Um, if it is minus one, all the central critical value twisted by anti-cyclotomy character vanishes. So under the condition that the root number is one, he basically using Galois representation, the non-CM, you need to assume non-CM uh, eigenform. In that case, he proved this kind of uh, assumption of non-vanishing. Um, but, but, but the previous hypothesis in your papers was slightly different. Oh, this is uh, basically the same. This is the uh, theorem 3.3 I mean, of that paper. But like J before, in the previous version of the paper, J was somehow explicit, but now J is- No, no, J, even in that paper, J is no explicit. Argument is the same for this part, this work, that work. Only things I renovated is that density theorem thing to answer the actual question. It might not be so clear from the proof given there, but from this proof, it would be perhaps clear. But the proof is the same for this Zalski density case. And so in, in that dwarf volume, when rank is one, I claimed a bit stronger result that there's only finitely many characters which having a vanishing integral. But this result tells you Zalski dense character. So it's a kind of slightly weaker. And uh, Finitely many things through open question. But whether it is true or not in the cast form case, I mean, this anti cyclotomic tower, say elliptic curve, in a very sporadic way, I mean, if this doesn't contain, this an underline doesn't contain arithmetic progression, means that the, it is quite sparse, the distance of two integers. So it is very small. However, this might happen in the anti-cyclotomic tower. So one needs to study in the Iwasawa serotic way what happened. And this kind of algebraic, algebra geometric argument just on the L value side may not really read that. I don't know at this moment. So it's still open. Yeah, I may ask other later. Yeah, thank you. Okay, any other questions?
is there any application to some twist of elliptic curve non vanishing for the l value there a twist means uh, the, the you lift it to the say for example q uh, basically the q then you lift the elliptic curve to uh, imaginary quadratic field and twist it by anti cyclotron with finite order character that that's the minimum system and that's a condition that root number one and uh, that's the same thing you can do. I think he did it for any general uh, total real field, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, there's square free Higuna hypothesis and so on. So he computed this kind of uh, Fourier coefficients. Then, you know, you know the Galois representation where uh, a, 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 Psi f is basically trace of Frobenius, and by Chabotar f density under some root number condition and so on, you can show this kind of condition. Well, I I think so. I see you express so p, and in that case the value vanishes simultaneously modular p. It's very rare, but it exists. I mean, Eisenstein says it won't have a root number one, but it could have a root one or minus one, but it could have a root number minus one modular p. So can you say briefly what's the main point in this, the proof of this black box theorem instead, the one from the very beginning? Main point of what? Is black box theorem at the very oh, black box theorem. That's something like, uh, so it's the same sort of thing. So now you consider CL algebraic inside CL infinity kind of things, maybe minor, but you replace L by P, okay? Then you can still have this projection to uh, delta minus kind of thing. Right? You, you split it into now gamma times delta minus. And it is, I'm actually saying, this is Gothic L and this is rational P. And uh, therefore uh, the rank of gamma, I mean rank ZP gamma is degree of totally real field. That is the D in case. Then in this case, I don't do any Zariski closure argument, but um, um, in a V to the Q, I still look at, and I suppose, say F for simplicity, I consider SR, okay? And um, then I consider sub-scheme, uh, I mean, the spectrum of O VQ centered at this point X. And in it, because this guy is basically uh, X R uh, Q gamma and tuple. And um, this guy has a stabilizer fixed by basically R L cro R P cross the regular representation acts on this point and it is fixed by that. So I consider in this, so it also acts on this guy. I consider a sub scheme. This is a one point thing in stock. I consider the spectrum of O, the Q, X, 
modulo some ideal B closed subscheme stable under any open subgroup. U. So our closure gives this kind of example. If you have that point, I started from a maximum order, it, 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 any order is okay. And any uh, idea is also okay. And uh, you apply this, I need that point, starting point. I need. And I look at this, which is stable under this kind of open subgroup. Then I use Chai's rigidity theorem to say that, to show that, first of all, to show that this, you, you now completed the formal completion you made. And then it, it, by Seat-8 theory, this is an ordinary abelian variety. By Seat-8 theory, this guy is a formal torus, periodic formal torus. So I think a restriction of a scalar of GM over O and something like that. So it's slightly more, it could be non-split, but it is the same. And uh, uh, by child's rigidity, I found that this guy is a union of uh, zeta i, ti kind of thing. Huh? So it may be something like you are crossing. Then, then first, once I get it, then I take um, a sort of uh, global Zariski closure. So this is a local point. And I take a Zariski closure, schematic closure. And by that, I get some X in V to the Q. Now, uh, usual algebraic variety, which whose local uh, com formal completion is something like that. So locally, this guy is in this shape, normal crossing. So you take resolution to kill singularity. Still, it acts again, this kind of things acts again. And using this and uh, modular theory, using this, and this V is a moduli of CM, a virion variety, and you do a lot of hard argument that if this guy is a proper uh, closed subscheme, then this X is, so you, you have several V will be contained in both delta uh, for V one times V two and other the i's i not equal one one and two. This means I just order it v q. I mean I order q to be q one q sum b and uh, um, uh, at least at one component this delta v one v two is um, diagonal, skewed diagonal. So it is a point to be times some G to the V, V running through this V, something this form. G is a similar uh, GL2 of F A, P kind of things. Then you use the fact that it's commute with this action of CM M cross, this kind of thing. Then this is actually, this is actually alpha in M cross. That means if this Q1 and Q2, Q1 is Q2 of this ideal alpha. So it's against 
uh, independence modular algebraic idea to, of this Q1, Q2. And this part is kind of, you have a lot of algebraic geometry to keep singularity go up, and then you have a lot of metal covering kind of things. And uh, it's, it's awful. And uh, um, I worked with Chinli, and um, Chinli has another proof, I think, but uh, my proof is more ad hoc. Chinli is uh, more sort of sophisticated, but uh, I try to make it as unsophisticated as possible, but quite sophisticated anyway. And uh, uh, so that this is how. That's why I don't like to give lectures. <laughs> I only once given uh, in a um, conference at Johns Hopkins University, JAMI conference. And uh, uh, yeah, it's one hour talk. I just explained this kind of thing. So it was very impressive, but actually I didn't explain very hardcore stuff. So, uh, and then that's it. <laughs> Okay, if there are no further questions, let's thank Professor Hida for this wonderful course.